Okay, let's finish out our CNT1 e-stop contactor, what things can be tied to it. So I, I went ahead without drawing it all back in here. The voltage you recall comes off our bridge or a cat board, if you will. The DC bus voltage comes off of that, comes into the L3 and L4 of our CNT1, our e-stop contactor, and it goes out, and then it goes to DC bus, which is goes to H2 VM negative and VM positive on the all-in-one DC. So what else do we put on this thing? The other thing that we put on this thing, so when you have an emergency stop, you don't want a spindle running, right? So that's one of the things that, that goes through here. Uh, I'm going to assume that we're talking about a VFD here. Um, if, you're, if you're using a magnetic contactor, there's certainly um, a schematic that will tell you how to make sure that that's disabled. I'm sure it's going through that and, and basically taking away you know, either power to the magnetic contactor for the spindle relay if you're not using a variable frequency drive. So it'll probably go through there. Um, uh, Centroid has multiple schematics given the type of machine you're using. If you're using a VFD, there's a schematic for it. If you're using a forward reverse magnetic contactor for your spindle, they have a schematic for that and how to wire that in. So, you know, if there's interest in that, I'm happy to try and explain it. Just leave a comment below if you want to go through um, setting up a forward reverse relay with the all-in-one DC. I'm happy to figure it out and put it on the dry erase board, but it's in the schematics. So anyway, so if we have, uh, let's just put the VFD variable frequency drive down here. And, you know, this is its um, enable circuit, which either it's an enable circuit or it's basically the comp, the common to the spindle forward, spindle reverse. So let's, uh, let's go with that, okay? What we got going through here is all-in-one DC H6 output 7 and all-in-one DC H6 output 8. And 8 H6, I've got my schematic over here, that's what I'm referring to. Output 7 is spindle enable and output 8 is spindle direction. So, 13 right here goes to all one DC H6 output 7. So H6 output 7. Here. And then the other one is all one DC H6 output 8 com. Okay, so we're working on spindle enable and spindle direction. Now spindle enable is just a single pulse, single throw. And then spindle, uh, spindle direction is in, in its normal state, it's in the forward direction. And then in reverse, it energizes and flips to the other direction, which is reverse, okay? So now we've got that. Now we need to finish this circuit. I mean, we can obviously see this, but we can't see a completed circuit. So now let's work on Output seven, let's see where this terminal's going. Output seven, all right, so we have a jumper that goes from output five common to output seven common. So output five, like that. And from output seven common, it goes to inverter common. So here's our inverter common. So from output five, yep, output five. It's gonna go over here. It's gonna come down to inverter common, okay? It's the common and then we're gonna put spindle forward, spindle reverse here. All right, 
So in this case, the variable frequency drive common is going to go up. It's going to go through output 5 common, jumps to output 7 common. Okay, that is correct. So now our common goes up, goes to output 5, which is inverter reset, but the common, and then spindle enable. It goes over here. All right, so that's our common. So right now we have a completed circuit common. It's going up. Spindle enables closed. It's going to go over through our CNT1, 13, and then it's going to go over, and then it comes to our spindle direction. And now we want reverse and forward. We have forward and reverse. So we're going to go, see if I can do this without making a complete mess of this. We're going to come down. This is forward here, and then here's our reverse. Boom. Okay. So in order to enable the VFD for it to go forward, number one, you have to program your VFD, and every VFD is dif different. You'll have to read your manual. Um, incidentally, Centroid has a website user forum. I'll try and put a link in the description below. So if you have questions, maybe somebody's already done it. If you get lost, a lot of VFD manufacturers have support. Well, you, you can tell them, hey, I'm trying to control my VFD We're using external. Uh, start stop, um, you know, spindle, an analog 0 to 10 volt DC input. Um, so you can get some help there. But every VFD is different, so it's program, usually programmed different. The wiring is typical, though. So common is going to go up, it jumps over, it goes to spindle enable, it goes through. And then again, if everything's normal, E stop C CNT1 is closed, it goes over, and it feeds the wiper or the common of the spindle direction. Then it goes to forward, comes down, goes to forward. So that, that means the VFD in, in normal state is programmed to go forward. So if you command an M3S1000, then it's already in the forward mode and it'll, it's, it's already grounding the input and telling the VFD move forward as soon as you get that 0 to 10 volt signal. So we've completed that circuit, but you see it goes through contractor 1. And when it's closed, circuit's complete, and the signals can make it down to the forward reverse. When you call an M4, G-code M4, that relay flops over to reverse, comes through and tells the VFD, okay, when you get the 0 to 10 volt signal, run my spindle in reverse, okay? So we've got that now. Now let's go to inverter reset so we can finish this circuit. Let's go reset, pin. These are the small terminals on the front of the VFD. Again, read your manual on your VFD and tells you how to set it. So, our reset circuit goes to output 5, H6 out 5. This is H6 going to output 5. So here's our reset. reset. Come down. There's reset. Now you can see why we jumpered from output 5 common over to output 7 common. So we're providing the common needed for the VFD. These signals, you know, if you were to jumper over to these ones and your VFD is programmed right, you're basically telling the VFD the same thing, but you're using the controls here to, to, to signal the VFD. So our inverter reset, if we're going to do a reset on our all-in-one DC, that, that will close and reset the VFD. Again, common. Common goes up. It's going over here, it's on five, and then when this closes, it's sending that reset signal to the VFD. All right? So that's, that's our VFD circuit. This common spindle forward, spindle re reverse, and reset. Now we have some other circuits on the VFD. Um, we've got, we started out with CNT1, we'll, we'll talk about that, but since we're on a roll with the VFD, let's finish up the VFD. What other things do we have on our VFD? All right, we got zero to 10 volt DC and zero to 10 volt common. So zero to 10 VDC signal in, zero to 10 volt DC common. I'm gonna use a different color marker. Maybe I should have done that earlier. Let's use green. All right, the all one DC it has its spindle speed common is at the top and spindle speed output is here. This is our, our analog. Um, if you watch my 
other video on my mill conversion I go through bench testing it and checking it with a meter and checking the 0 to 10 volts and kind of doing that that test so from here spindle speed common we're gonna go down here come down to here oh we're not being able to see some of this stuff sorry about that guys let me come down a little bit there we go sorry about that I'm sorry I just now caught that so spindle speed common comes down goes to 0 to 10 volt DC common and then our spindle speed 0 to 10 volt spindle speed comes out going to come down over up and to 0 to 10 volt signal input so when you com command a M3S1000 you linearly the all one DC will output the right signal whether it's say let's just say one volt okay that one volt comes over and goes into the VFD and the VFD will ramp up to the one volt and hit 1000 again you got to follow the manual and calibrating things you have to tell the software okay what's the minimum spindle speed of my machine what's the maximum spindle speed of my machine and let's say zero is the minimum some can't run zero some have to run a minimum they just won't they won't do it but let's just say for simplicity's sake zero is the minimum 10,000 rpm is the max and then linearly the control will output zero to ten volts so at a thousand rpm it's one volt at 5,000 RPM, it's 5 volts. At 7,500 RPM, it's 7.5 volts. At 10,000 RPM, it's 10 volts coming out. So that gives you an idea. So that, that's, that's the importance of making sure that you tell the software what your minimum spindle speed is and what your maximum spindle speed is. You want, you want this information before you need to program your software. So remember that. So now we've got our analog signal out of the, the all-in-one DC into our VFD. Let's see what else we've got to do for our VFD. Uh, fault. Okay, fault common and fault normally closed. Let's, let's do that in red. This is usually a relay output that's programmable in your variable frequency drive. So you can tell, you know, if you have an RA1 or RA2 on your VFD, then you tell the software, okay, RA1, RA2, that relay, that relay pair contact is going to be my fault output so you tell it if I have a fault close that relay so let's say fault common fault out so in this one it's just a dry contact alright so normally one of them is going to have to go we're going to we, since we're going to an input we're going to come out of that and here's our spindle fault right here that happens to be input number 10. So we're going to come out of spindle fault, come down to spindle fault output. So 24 volts, remember 24 volts is on our commons of our, of our input signals. So 24 volts will come out, it's going to come down and into the fault output. And then we need, to, we need a way to get it to our, our commons and our print calls for spindle fault normally closed and spindle fault common is TB114A TB114A is here so it goes here over down spindle fault common so we've completed that circuit 24 volts in out down through the, the contact here internally to the VFD well, that's crappy and when it closes the signal can complete and tell the all-in-one DC that there's a spindle fault so that's our spindle fault common what else do we have on that uh, inverter common fault reset I think we've got that yeah we've got that spindle forward spindle reverse 0 to 10 volt DC signal 0 to 10 volt DC common our fault common or fault normally closed analog out analog common okay that's uh, let's talk about that one so if you have an analog output most VFDs have this you can program them 
if you have an analog output, let's, I'm running out of colors here, let's go with, uh, see I already used blue, green, red. Um, well, let's go with blue again. So let's say we program an analog out, analog common. Okay, what is that used for? You can use that as a spindle load meter on the all one DC. These outputs here, ADC common, ADC input, which is, is your analog signal into the all-in-one. So you can program the VFD um, to output current, a current signal on this, and then the all-in-one DC will present it uh, on the display as a spindle load meter. So, analog common. So, they're going to all in one DC H9 ADC in and H9 ADC common, pretty straightforward. So, here's our analog common. I'm going to come down to this. And then our analog input. analog input to there. So this is analog out and common. So that covers our VFD. Two, two, four, six, eight, ten wires basically. Uh, that VFD. That cable should be uh, a shielded cable off the VFD to these to the to the all one DC and its shield should be tied to the ground on TB1. All right, so that covers the VFD. So you can see the VFD is disabled mass from a master standpoint from here. It's common, common coming out, it's going up, goes here, goes here. We got spindle uh, enable, so the common comes through and it goes over here and it's waiting for this contactor to close. So nothing, no spindle, spindle can happen, no spindle movement or the VFD cannot be enabled until this is closed. When it's closed, now the common goes back, drops down, forward reverse, can, can happen, okay? Hopefully you see that and understand it. I know this is exactly what, this is busy right here just working with the variable frequency drive, but I hope that's, that's clear for you and uh, you can understand it. So we started with CNT1 again. When this thing opens, the spindle is, is disabled, okay? Give you a second to kind of scan that again, look at it. I hope it's, uh, I hope my going through it point by point helps you out. Um, I know all the lines can get pretty, pretty busy on that, that thing.